I'm Colleen Taylor. You're watching TechCrunch TV. Here with me in the studio is the founder and CEO of Scanadu, Walter DeBrower. Scanadu has some updates from the last time that we talked, so thank you for coming by. Oh, thank you, Colleen. And just to um, refresh, maybe we could just talk quickly about what Scanadu is as a company. Yes. So <clears throat> Scanadu is a, um, uh, it's a medical device company. As, uh, it started 27 months ago. And uh, basically, in the spirit of the tricorder from the, you know, the fictional medical instrument from Star Trek, it wants to create a sort of an all-in-one device that almost replaces the diagnostic experience that you have in a clinic. Okay. And for that, we have actually divided the clinic in three parts. Um, the emergency room where you are hooked up and you get taken all your electromagnetic signs, your vital signs. Then the labs where they, where your blood is and your urine uh, is being analyzed. And then imaging where you take a CT or an MRI or an ultrasound. And then it all comes back and there is a chart on your bed and then, ta-da, the doctor comes, looks at the chart. and gives you a recommendation, which is more 21st century than a diagnosis, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, about you know what's wrong with you or what's not wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So um, we think that these uh, real medical uh, readings in the hands of consumers on their mobile, that this could change healthcare for the better, just as Google has changed the fact that now everyone has power, so um, power is no longer actually an elite. So giving the same information, medical information to the crowd could open up avenues of unseen opportunity because you were using the crowd there. So healthcare in itself could benefit from that disruption. And so there are, there are three aspects here, and I see one of them in front of us. And, and I'm excited because the last time that we talked, uh, we didn't have any prototypes here physically oh, to look yes. at. And yeah, so yeah. explain to me what, what this is. Yes. So uh, this is a, um, uh, it's going to be uh, smaller, the, uh, because this is, you know, we 3D print them ourselves uh, in, in the lab. Um, so this is a, a vital sign monitor. So it, in 10 seconds, when you bring it to your uh, temple or your forehead, it gives you your five vital signs, which they normally do in every hospital when you arrive in the emergency room. But it takes a bit longer. Uh, so first of all, your temperature, your oxygenation, your SpO2 with the PPG sensor, that's the, the oxygen in your blood, your respiratory rate, uh, your heart rate, and it also gives you your ECG. Okay. And we have had it now. Uh, so we had a breakthrough like six months ago so that we can also now use blood pressure, diastolic and systolic blood pressure, and even stress, you know, which is in some countries, emotional stress is also a vital sign. I see. OK. Uh, can I try it out? Can sure. This actually works? Yes. <laughs> we'll find out. OK. So I place uh, these two places for my fingers. Yes, and now you put it on your temple. Okay. Yeah. So, and it's scanning. Just have to wait a bit. Normally it's like 10 seconds, but if you talk or move, it can be a bit longer. Ah, here we go. Ah, your heart rate is pretty normal, it's 83. Your temperature is very normal, 98.6. Oxygenation 98 points, perfect readings. So these are the three medical readings which are already in there and which can easily pass through FDA. The rest of the readings uh, will be added soon. We are now doing our algorithms. And so you will have like 10 readings in one screen in 10 seconds. Wow, okay. So, and normally I suppose I could, I could take my temperature uh, at home, but I don't really have a heart rate monitor at home or definitely not an oxygenation. Yeah. monitor at home. Yeah, so we talked a lot to uh, our community uh, because now um, uh, since we won that uh, the, the prize at uh, CES, we had like a lot of talk with people and uh, a lot of emails and we even created a forum. And 
So there's a lot of things that they actually, first of all, they want this device now. Um, and, uh, but uh, we also learn from them that, you know, not like all the other devices that are out there, they want real medical readings, but uh, they want it not only on themselves. They want to be able to scan their kids. Mm. They want to be able to scan their parents or help their friends. And uh, they love educating people how to do this and how they think it is and to give tips and tricks about this. So we changed the device considerably so that in the, you know, internally in the design so that it now can also scan others. Because all the other devices out there, they just track yourself. It's a very egoistical and less Samaritan uh, way of, uh, of thinking about devices. And at the same time, uh, we also learned that uh, so the people, they don't only want the ER, they also want to be able to test you know, the, their um, uh, urine uh, or their saliva uh, and even their blood. And they also want to have imaging in there. So we try to put everything in there. So that means three different data sets, electromagnetic, molecular diagnostics, and imaging data. And what does it all mean? And um, in order actually to do all that, we had to increase the horsepower because this was an 8-bit device. Okay. So we had to go to 32-bit device. And we are using <coughs> Micrium which is actually um, <coughs> uh, used by NASA for the Mars rover uh, Curiosity. Uh, it's an, uh, a real-time operating system. And uh, so then we are really designing for the future. We can plug in a lot more later on. I see. And uh, because with 8-bit, we would be uh, designing for almost the past, you know, like okay. a bit past, present. Uh, and um, so and, uh, we decided to... Now, the, in order to pass FDA, you have to tell FDA, so what are people going to do with it? And yes. what are the claims? So you need a usability study. Okay. So uh, we decided to follow the complete pathway of the FDA with IRB and, uh, you know, informed consent. And, uh, but then at the same time, start actually uh, with the first users. And we need a couple of thousand users because, you know, they will be spread out over countries okay. and see how they use it. And also very interesting because, you see, medicine is also a cultural product. So um, it's, there is not a universal kind of medicine. For instance, in China... <laughs> it's yeah. not just a, a scanning device, it's also a phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this probably gives me an alert now. <laughs> in, uh, in China, for instance, the topology of the tongue is very important. Oh, of course, So yes. here, uh, you know, nobody, you know, uh, it's not taken up into the, the ritual of uh, first-line doctors to look at your tongue and to, you know, give you a, a diagnosis. So. We will see, we call it the global body, we will see in real time on the Indiegogo campaign that we are launching the 22nd of May, we will see in real time what people in these different countries measure and what they want to measure. I see. So, for instance, we already looked like, uh, so we have this, this very small uh, trial in France and people like, everyone wants to do blood pressure. Hmm. That's, you know could like, you know, uh, I can understand that from the French, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what would the English do or what would Indonesia like to, uh, to check? And uh, India probably stress, right, you know. Right, right. Um, so this Indiegogo campaign that you're launching today, I suppose, is when yeah. this video will air, is um, soliciting people from all over the world to participate yeah. in your FDA study yeah. so that uh, eventually we can get these devices cleared and up for sale. When do you expect that to happen? I know it's impossible to predict uh, how long well, an FDA... <laughs> so uh, now uh, we are, uh, first of all, so in the, the 22nd of May, we also have some uh, um, uh, questions to the community, like what would they... Because we can put a lot of stuff in. We 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 put in as much as we think people would like. Now we have to ask them what else, what else do they like and how would they use it. And so we, 
will deliver it uh, the first uh, quarter of uh, 2014. Okay. So it's actually they're reserving their unit. And then they become actually researchers in our usability study. And we are setting up a special forum for that with uh, people who are there. And a special board, a medical board of 11 doctors um, who will then actually see how patients are or, you know, our consumers are going to um, uh, behave with these readings. Are they going to be scared? Are they going to look it up? Are they going to call their doctor? Right. Are they going to compare it? Are they going to give, you know, diagnosis to other people? What, you know, like, or are they scanning themselves uh, only? Or, and how does it change their behavior? Uh, mm. So all these things, so we don't know. So finding that out together with a, a worldwide community in the spirit of uh, that tricolor concept, uh, it's a baby boomer's dream a bit. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and how much will this device cost or how well, much? Uh, so because we have expanded it a lot, it will cost a bit more than we foreseen it's, you know. Um, and, but for the first uh, thousand, uh, we keep the same price. It's 149. So for the, the very early one, it's 149, okay. and they will get it, you know, uh, uh, very... And for the rest, we will have 199. Okay. Yeah. And when you say it's a baby boomer's dream, I guess I just kind of want to touch on this for the last question. It just sounds like with the Indiegogo campaign now that you're launching, and from the very inception of this company 27 months ago, it's just a completely modern way of approaching medical devices and building a medical company. Yeah. Can you speak to that? I, I suppose just you know how you're thinking about Scanadu and how it differs from. Yeah. Typical. Well, the um, uh, so the the uh, I think you know, three years ago when I, I moved here to do this company, I'm very glad that I did because um, you know on, on the west coast and certainly in the South Bay is where you know is where people fight for their ideas you know mm -hmm. with passion and all the competition is here we're all you know like a, a, a happy bunch of frenemies you know <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> working day and night so because there's no, nothing else to do um, and uh, so we modify our belief system actually very very quickly mm -hmm. so crowdsourcing and crowdfunding um, uh, is a great way to build new products it's actually um, a sort of a, 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 a it, Google actually started it because mm -hmm. Google they they measure something and when not enough people come they don't build it right and they just say like no we give we gave it up the, the time is not right perhaps next year right so Google has become not a company but a concept of concepts mm. and uh, I think this crowdfunding where you say come and we will build you know, the reverse of this. Plus, at the same time, when you are building it, you are building it with a community and also crowdsourcing the legal aspects of this community right. and the usability aspects. I think that's, uh, that, that's one of the, um, uh, the, the biggest new trends in building medical devices now. And this is actually very recent. Right. It's very exciting stuff, and it'll be fun to see what the crowd says and <laughs> what the scout ultimately uh, is when when it launches next year. So Walter, thank you for coming by and keep us posted. Thank you, Colleen.